Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from this show and can spare even a dollar, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Muix. Today on Metasploit Minute, we're gonna be going into a really cool feature called prepend migrate. So we're gonna to pretend to migrate what now? <laughs> prepend migrate. So um, prepend migrate is basically in addition to a, a payload that happens before the payload happens. So what it does is it prepends a migration. You know that black yeah, magic yeah. we already we, talked about? We were talking about, about right. a couple episodes back how if you're in one process and maybe you want to be in iExplore.exe because you want to capture keystrokes that only right. Internet Explorer are seeing with the keylogger, you would migrate over to that process. Yep. So, so prepend migrate right. would mean before you execute the payload, mm -hmm. right? So let's say that um, one of your one of your um, targets is is Internet Explorer um, vulnerability. Okay. Uh, and we've already talked about how rare that kind of is on real tests. Um, but let's say it is, and you want to um, you want to get out of that process as quickly as possible. What if you're not around to the console to do that? Then they close the browser and you've lost your shell. Oh. Bad, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't want that to happen. Well, what prepend migrate does is it actually migrates out of that process that's crashing because of your exploit. Right. And then gives you a shell from wherever it goes. Nice. Because you know, because again, this is just like, you know, the why you need persistence in multiple different, you know, processes yeah. and hedge your bets in that sense. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, processes are going to hang. I mean, that's what exploits do. Like your computer's like, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the, the cool thing about this is that it's not just singularly usable in, in exploit um, uh, possibilities, right? So prepend migrate um, is great for other things as well. So let's say that you want to have persistence and want to migrate out of that process that you have persistences first. That way they, when they delete or stop your, or whoever's looking at it, right. kills your connection. That executable is still there, the, and you're you're just getting killed in Notepad or something. Wait, so walk me through that. You're saying that before you even start the the reverse shell or whatever have you, whatever you, exploit you've chosen. Uh, okay, so let's 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 say that I have a persistence method where I'm dropping a binary. Yeah. I don't want them to find that binary. Okay. Right. So what happens is. I have prepend migrate in the binary's payload that I'm throwing in there. Oh, so, so the it when runs. It runs. It it's then actually going over it here. It hops into another process. Then making the connection. Oh, so then go ahead and delete bob.exe yeah. because it's not going to matter. Right. Or okay. notepad.exe or whatever you want it to write, migrate into. Nice. Right. So they're going to see C colon Windows System 32 notepad.exe connecting to wherever. The, the, which it normally doesn't do. But, right. Um, so. You said that this can be, can this be used for more than just exploits? Is this just something that you use, uh, do you like use this and then pass it the name of an exploit and then all of its settings? No, no, no. So what I mean by that is, is most people would think of it as is migrating out of a, of a, out of a crashing process. Mm -hmm. And what I was trying to uh, say is that you think a little broader. You can think of it as a persistence method as well. Yeah. Right. So what so we're going to take a look. Yeah. What we're going to do is actually, we already have an interpreter session treated. So, um, let's just say that we want to, and the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can upload the file easily. Okay. Okay. But we've already got a session. Right. So background, I'm going to use payload, Windows, Meterpreter, reverse, reverse TCP. And we're just doing that for ease of use. And so show options shows our basic options. If we do a show advanced, and we already covered show advanced in the past, we go up to here, and there's prepend migrate. We set that to true, and it'll spawn and run shellcode in a new process. But that new process is going to be run DLL32 by default. Um, however, if we go over here, it says process to migrate shellcode into prepend migrate process. So. What do you think is a good set of options? Definitely turning that to true, right? Sure. So prepend, prepend migrate to true. We got that. So now, does it have? Do we have to then say show options for prepend migrate, or no. can we just you know 
give it the name of an executable or DLL that we want to migrate proc ah. svc host.exe. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. So now if we set our options correctly, our L host to 172, set our L port, we're going to just, you know, set L port to, you know, 80, 80. No, I oh, can't do that because I already have something listed on 81, there. 81, 81. Um, I actually think I have, let's do jobs V and there is my, mirror. it's already listed on oh. 444. So you know what? Let's just keep it that way. So let's set our L port to 4444. And then we type generate and we've already been through this. We really have. So exe file to temp bob.exe. Wham, bam, done. Sessions dash I one upload. Uh, so now we're in our interpreter and we're right. going to go ahead and upload this and right. execute it. Yeah, we're going to go into temp upload, um, temp bob.exe, bob throw it in there. Okay, now we've uploaded bob.exe. We're going to do a process list. And in this process list, we're going to see that there is a bunch of SVC hosts, right? As there usually are. Right, but there are no SVC hosts and you can see it as our user, as the standard user. We are not escalated. We can't see um, see this 429. Yeah, I was going to ask, what, where are you getting the user from? Over here. So that column, oh, I see, that's user. There you right. go. And this is a good indication, and I've said this in past episodes, but this is a good indication that um, you are not elevated past UAC. So if you can't see other processes' users, that means that those are usually system or other users that you can't see. So what about those uh, up at the top there, like um, WMI priv .se, uh, se exe What user is that? Probably system, but it doesn't have to be. It just means that you are not elevated enough to see it. Anyways, so we've done that. We've, we've, um, we've uploaded it to C colon time. So we're going to just execute it. C colon temp bob.exe. Okay, so we see that we're getting a new session um, and we do a PS and bob.exe is still running. So that's one, one thing about prepend migrate is that it doesn't kill the process. Oh, okay. So it's, it's designed for exploits that are, the process is dying anyways. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't try and kill it as well. But if we killed bob.exe right now, yep. it wouldn't matter because it's already moved over to service host, right? Yep. So kill 3368. Three, Our session didn't die. That is really rad because so, you're running in service host now. Yep. You've just, mi hence the term, you've just migrated over. So, and you can see right here, I'm going to scroll in. There's our SVC host. And it's, it's running, running as your us. user. Yep. There you go. And see, so we have our second session, and let's go into let's go into the second session, and do a netstat. Now, if you do netstat, you can actually see. So we'll see it on port four four four. Yep, we'll see our connection, and there's SVC host connected on four 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 four. Wow, so that's kind of rad. But um, one of the things that I'm wondering now is you showed the option to do this process migration by doing the show advanced options, right? Yep. Does every exploit have to have this, or can I use this with just any exploit? So that's the amazing thing about Metasploit, right? So Metasploit actually separates payloads and modules, right? So the modules can use payloads, but the, um, the payloads can be anything. And if you're talking about a Windows payload, any Windows payload actually has the prepend migrate ability. So whatever Windows payload you select, be it you know, Windows Interpreter reverse TCP or reverse HTTPS or bind or whatever, you still get the um, awesome ability of prepend migrate. And is it because those modules were written to support it or is it just because it's just the way the framework works? It's because the framework is in a sort of fashion where you can just add more things to it. So what it's really doing is, is taking the payload and appending a, a, you know, a prepending more shell code onto sure, it. Sure, sure. That's kind of rad. And I love how it was just like put into your Bobby XE. Yep. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, I'm totally getting how this can be just applied to so, so many, many things. Yeah, it's just yeah, awesome, it's isn't it? like, huh, now you just kind of want to start stacking all of the stuff right. together. So think about it in persistence. Like take a persistence payload and then change it from 
from just a normal service to a buying payload. So now you have you know, the service starting and then as soon as it starts, as soon as that executable finishes, it, it then runs your, or before it finishes, it runs your new thing, binds to a port and then dies. That service is no longer running, right? So mm -hmm. you can kill the service or whatever, stop the service. And you have a bind session going. Then you can connect into it and it doesn't show up as anything. Yeah, well, can you migrate to multiple uh, processes? Can you prepend migrate multiple times? I'm sure you could, but I don't, there's no way in the, meta, in the framework itself to do it. Yeah, because at this point, I just want to like be a part of every running process. Mm. Like, kind of ridiculous. like scatter bomb? Yeah, that's actually a, that's actually a feature request that I made into Meterpreter. There we go. Maybe yeah. that'll happen. Hey, you know what? If you guys have a feature request, you can send it to, for the show that is, you can send it to msf at hack5.org. You can also just leave a comment uh, on the YouTube. We do really uh, read all of those and we appreciate those because a lot of times they really drive uh, what we're doing on the show. So I do have to thank you for that. Yeah, the first, what, five episodes of this season has all been because of the things that you guys requested. Yeah, and season five is also uh, brought to you epically by our best sponsor ever, you. I, I say this with all honesty, it is just heartwarming, Mubix, to see that you're here because there are people all around the world that love this and want to see yeah. it continue. And they say, hey, I see some value in this, so I'm going to give some value back. And so I say, if you're in the if you actually have that opportunity to give even like a dollar an episode, that is huge because that means that we can produce more shows yep. and more epic stuff is happening. And then hit those milestones where we get, you know, RSS feeds and then downloads and then all streaming kinds of stuff. Yep, streaming. And streaming and then even, you know, there's a there's a crazy epic milestone that I hope we can achieve, which is free training for free training. Free training for all of the patrons. Yeah, that would be which awesome. Which is kind of huge. You can get there. We, we can. can. And you know what? We're even doing our first ever training yep. here in the Hack5 warehouse. Not so quite free though. Not quite free, no. But close. Uh, but close, <laughs> actually. Yeah. No, seriously. Like, look at some of the uh, other training. This is uh, a very special introductory because we are just kicking this off. And so we would like you all as guinea pigs so that we can beta <laughs> test on you. Uh, no, uh, we're going to migrate your processes. Uh, come on down to... <laughs> Sorry, <I'm not> mix. <laughs> Um, you can find the details over at hack5.org slash training. But June 26th, we're having our first ever uh, pen testing with Hack5, meaning yeah. with us. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun, too. Like, we're going to talk about all kinds of practical application stuff where you're going to talk about SDR, Pineapple, Metasploit, you know, like lab Rubber stuff, duckies, duckies, social engineering. Social engineering. You're going to learn like the practical. Lots like, of stuff. Here's a bag of tools that you can walk home with and the knowledge and confidence to use them appropriately. Right. Not just giving you a shovel, but showing you how to use the shovel. There we go. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so anyway, I just want to thank you all again for supporting this and allowing us to make this happen because yeah. it's pretty epic. So again, hack5.org slash training if you want to get in on that, uh, yeah. as well as... Supporting the show at patreon.com slash mubix, M-U-B-I-X. Yeah, and all the other ways to find out Epic uh, Metasploit Minute Swag and all of that at metasploitminute.com. Yep. So that's it for the show. I appreciate all of the support that we've get, we can be, been getting for season five. Um, it's been awesome. And I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Thank you very much. Thank you.